This misconception that this body-mind and this record of experience is who I am. The awareness that we are <clears throat> has always been around, but the self that we think we are has only been around for temporarily. Make the distinction between the awareness that we are that has always been around and the thought that we are that has only been around temporarily. And make the most of the thought that we are that has only been around temporarily and will only be around temporarily. Not losing sight of the awareness that we are that has always been around. When I say been around, it's always been this presence. Always been this awareness. It hasn't always been around as far as time is concerned. It's always been present even long during the period that time has been here. But it's this making of this distinction between the body-mind, the self I think I am, which is the I sense or the sense of me, the case history, and the pure awareness of being, the presence in which all of this is appearing. Get it that this presence in which all of this is appearing is the self I am and all that is appearing is only temporary. That's what I've identified with. Make the distinction between what I've identified with and that which I am and live primarily in that which I am only observing and enjoying that which I'm identified with. Nothing wrong with that. Just don't lose sight of the awareness as being the, prim the primordial, primal basis. And stay alert in this recognition, in this recognition, in this perception. If I remain alert to the truth all the scriptures come alive, see? The truth that sets us free, the peace that passes all understanding. Before time was, I am. We're already free but we are not knowing that we're free to what extent we are identified with the form, the body-mind, and the case history. How do you stay in this awareness? Conscious company is the easiest way. When you do not have the advantage of conscious company, then the next most direct way is inquiry. But the inquiry, when you don't have the advantage of conscious company, in order to keep the inquiry in the advantage of conscious company, 
in the go and the full awareness that is occurring in conscious company to have it when you don't have the conscious company in the environment is you have to create it you have to sustain it you have to maintain it and the only way you can do that is to keep the inquiry constant if you slip out of the inquiry back into the mind into the body mind identification then the environment around you is going to hold you in time and in the appearance of this case history and everyone else that is involved which is this dream and the nature of that is suffering It's not bad, it just hurts like hell. It's not wrong, it's just painful. And the only way to, to not succumb to the pain, to the suffering, is to stay alert and present in the awareness that always already is not a new awareness, not a better awareness, not a different awareness, not a higher awareness, the only awareness there is. The only one there is. This present one. Now we have to look see, know, and realize, am I choosing to be in this awareness that is happy or to live at the effect of the body-mind and suffer and then blame anything and everything else for my own inadvertence? Because there ain't no one else doing it to me. There has never been anyone doing it to me. I have always been doing it to myself. There's a lot of things that I will do when I'm suffering that I wouldn't do otherwise. And none of them work other than being awake and aware to the true nature of the self I am. Not any method works, it's only temporary. Anything that we do in the scenario of the case history, which is the dream, anything we do in the dream, while we're still dreaming that the dream is real, as long as we're still identified with the body-mind as though it is me, Anything that we do in that identification is not going to last and not going to bring reprieve from the suffering. Not anything. I'm not saying there's anything wrong in any of the things that we do that are just palliatives, temporary ways of dealing with it. All I'm saying is that nothing we do while we're identified with the body-mind as though we actually are the body-mind, as long as we're identified with time and space as though time and space are real, nothing that we do will give us permanent relief. Nothing. Have I said it? Nothing. The only thing that will give us permanent relief is awakening from this dream or awakening to the fact that it is a dream, that the body-mind is not who I am, that time and space are not real, that the infinite and eternal awareness that I am is the only reality, and that will free me.
For the nature of that awakened awareness is bliss. It's that which I'm otherwise seeking through all of the processes and strategies that I'm engaged in in the dream itself. It doesn't matter what I'm engaged in in the dream itself. It really doesn't matter. Whatever form it takes, whatever name I want to give it, whatever justification or rationalization that I may want to name it or give it, all that I'm doing is looking for freedom from the suffering. And nothing that I do to get free of the suffering is going to free me from the suffering except awakening to the true nature of the being that I am. Now, what are we going to do with this? We're going to see it, accept it, align ourselves in a perfect alignment with it and live it consciously or we want to slip back off into unconsciousness back into the suffering and then to try to do something about the suffering from within the suffering it's up to us As long as I'm still ca caught up in identification with the body-mind and, and meditating this me as though this me is who I am without recognizing that it's only a concept and understand something. As long as we have this body, we're going to always have to deal with this body and this mind. It's not bad, it's not wrong. The body is a vehicle, the mind is a tool. Don't judge them. Just know them for their, what they are and their natures. So you work with the nature of the thing. You know that the nature of fire is hot, so you use it to cook your food. You could also use it to destroy something. You have to utilize the nature of the thing for whatever purpose or intention that you're using it for, not curse it because you may have used it wrong. Don't judge it because you've used it wrong. Wrongly. It's proper English, I guess. Now, Rich, you said, I don't know anything. Abide in that awareness that is not the knowing, but is the being, and see all of this, but in the knowing of it, know it and let it go. Don't take the knowing of it saying, Ah, this is me, I am the knower of this, and then stay identified with it. See it for what it is. Utilize whatever is appropriate from within it. Live appropriately. Live appropriately, which is compassionately, which is living and letting live and allowing those what appear to be others to have the same opportunities. Learn how to relate and communicate in such a way that it is a live and let live. 
If there are the others that are ignorant and not having this awareness, learn how to live with that. To the best of your ability, which means predominantly stay in the awareness as the awareness and see the process as it's occurring. Not be at the effect of the process that is occurring as it is occurring. Let go of identification with the I am the body notion, for that is the suffering. Know that you have a body, but you're not the body. You have a mind, but you're not the mind. Live in this awareness as this awareness, which is without beginning and without ending. This pure I am this of being. The nature is ex pure existence, pure consciousness, and in its realization is bliss. Live in this bliss as happiness. Namaste. Namaste. Now, 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 what are we going to do with this?